Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our video number 10, hair color. In our past video, we discussed color theory. Today, we're going to try to apply that color theory to actually coloring hair. Now, again, these videos are designed to help you pass the written part of your state board exam. So we're not gonna be doing actual demonstrations of hair color. We'll just be discussing the points the state board exam will ask you in a written format. There are plenty of videos online, some good and some kind of sketchy showing you how to actually apply hair color. So we're not gonna to touch that. We're focused just on what's on your exam. These videos are good in every state. We get people calling us all the time. What about North Carolina? What about Michigan? What about Texas? What we say here is valuable for every state. If you need more specifics for your individual state, go to our website, cosmetologystateboardexam.com. We have the material in English and Spanish for every state in the country. Now on page 672 of this book, which is the current Milady cosmetology textbook, it talks about porosity. It says there are three types of porosity. There's low porosity, average porosity, and there's high porosity. Now, just to confuse the issue, on your state board exam, it will ask you about poor porosity and good porosity. Guarantee there will be two or three questions on porosity. Don't miss them. They're not really that complicated. Okay? Slide number one will show you poor porosity equals low porosity. The hair is in good condition. The cuticle is intact and closed tightly. Because the cuticle is closed, the hair tends to be resistant. Because the hair is resistant, it's difficult for moisture or chemicals to penetrate into the past the cuticle. So processing will take longer. Now, I would strongly suggest stopping the video right here, getting out your paper and writing down what this slide shows you, because I guarantee you there's a question on poor or low porosity. Now, moving right along to good or what the state calls high porosity. The hair is not in good condition. Good or high porosity means your hair is not in good condition. The cuticle is open, usually from chemicals, curling irons, flat irons, blow dryers, things of that nature, okay? Because the cuticle is open, it's easy for moisture and chemicals to get into the cortex of your hair. So processing will occur quickly. In terms of hair coloring, it often becomes too dark and sometimes even gets a green ashy look to it. On the other hand, it'll fade out very quickly. Chemically treated hair, perms, decolorizers, relaxers, also tend to reject warm tones in a tint back, which brings us to another interesting concept, tint back. In the Salon Fundamentals book on page, uh, where is it here, some 555, it talks about a tint back. In the Milady Barber book on 672, it also talks about a tint back. And the third place that talks about a tint back is your state board exam. Coincidentally, the only place that doesn't talk about a tint back is your Milady cosmetology book. Now, ask me why, I don't know. The Barber book discusses it, the Salon Fundamentals book discusses it, the state board exam asks you about it, and the Milady cosmetology book is dead silent. So I'm gonna tell you what a tint back is. According to the Barber book, a tint back is the term used to describe the process of coloring hair back to its original color. Once again, a tint back is the term used to describe the process of coloring hair back to its original color. And they suggest you use a demi-permanent tint to do this. The person has always made their hair blonde and for whatever reason, we don't care. They wanna put it back to a natural color of brown, a tint back. Now, before wrapping up on the subject of porosity, you want to keep in mind that temperature has a big impact on porosity. Look at question number one. I'm going to read it to you. Which of the following will affect porosity and slow down the processing of a chemical? A, air conditioning, B, overhead fans, C, heat lamps, or D, A and B? And the answer is D, A and B air conditioning and overhead fans. They will cool the air down. They keep the cuticle closed. Long time ago, when I was very young, and that was really a long time ago, 
my very first job out of cosmetology school, I got a great station. At least I thought it was a great station, right by the air conditioning vent. We were in Miami. It was very hot. I thought, oh, score. I was having a lot of trouble with perms because back in the day, perms were very popular. Eventually, I realized why that station was available. None of the more experienced stylists wanted that station because the AC vent was blowing directly on the customer's head. It impacted the perm processing, it impacted the color processing. Nobody wanted that station. Do not be near the AC vent or the overhead fan. It will slow down the processing. So when you see your state board test question, anything that will tend to lower the temperature, AC vents, fans, will make the process take longer. Okay. Now, one more thing we want to talk about, which also makes me kind of wonder about this book. I generally like this book, but I'm a little bit worried about a couple of things here. The pH of different kinds of hair color. There will be a question on your test. Currently, their favorite has to do with semi-permanent hair color. It doesn't give you the pH values in that book. Once again, the Milady Barber book gives you the pH values, and so does the Salon Fundamentals book. And I'm going to give them to you right here. Number one, the pH of temporary hair color is between 2.0 and 4.5. Number two, the pH of semi-permanent hair color is between 7.0 and 9.0. And number three, the pH of permanent hair color is between 9.0 and 10.5. Keep in mind that all toners, even, I mean all colors, even toners, require a PD test. The only exception is temporary colors. If you work in a salon with older women, you'll sometimes see a roux. It's spelled R-O-U-X, rinse. You put it on the sink. It's just a color rinse that comes out with the next shampoo. Temporary hair colors. They do not require a PD test. But everything else does. Semi-permanent, demi-permanent, permanent, and toners. And the state loves to give you a question about toners and PD tests. Because we think, oh, toners are very mild. The book says they're delicate pastel shades. They still need a PD test. We're coming to the end of today's video. We try to keep them short, as you know. So please send us your comments. They help us make the next videos coming up. We know what you want to hear about. Make sure you like our station and subscribe so you get notification of future videos. Now, our next video coming up, I think, is a really good one. It's personally my, my favorite. It has the five strategies you must know if you plan on passing your test. Without it, this is not going to happen. Right? Thanks so much and look forward to seeing you on our next video.